Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm going to take care of the business stuff first, okay? In a little while, about 15 minutes or so, we're going to have our uh, candle lighting service. And the uh, control freak in me gets a little nervous, all right? So this is what I've been told. At the, at, at the time, we're going to have a special music later on that's beautiful. And we're going to have some people come forward, and they're going to light candles per roll. What we're asking for, from you is when they come down to light the candle, pull the cup down, but hold it up straight so that when they pull it over and the wax comes out, it doesn't land on you or the floor. It comes in a cup. And then once they've already... Once you've got your candle lit, pull it up like this, and be careful because there are people next to you. No open flames, okay? That, that's what we got to do. And uh, we're not going to have an offering past the plate type thing. What we do have is we have a box in the back that's our, our congregation's what we call change for the dollar. And everything collected tonight is going to go to our, our gamma a ministry organization, the Greater Haver Ministry Association, and those funds get pulled, and there's where the money comes from in our community for those that need um, uh, emergency housing, um, foodstuffs, clothing, uh, sometimes long-term care. That's our community uh, pot in order to make sure that we're taking care of those in need around us. So if you are able... Would love for you to help us to contribute to reach out to those, okay? All right, here we go. We got a passage. We're calling it the, the message of Christmas. It comes from Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. I would have liked to have seen that. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news, good news that will bring great joy, good news that will bring great joy for all the people. Now most of us have heard those verses again and again, so much so that they can honestly be a little hard to hear anew. Tonight I'm going to ask each of us to pause and just try our best to hear the message of Christmas as if for the first time. What is it that God is saying to us this Christmas that for sure we don't want to miss or let pass by? Well, we know that primarily the message is declared in the next verse of that Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. The Lord. That is the primary message. This coming Sunday, Patrick is going to preach the, that good news of our Savior that has come. And we want to invite you to come and celebrate us with us the import of that message this Sunday. But tonight, I want to ask a little different question as we're, we're all preparing to celebrate Christmas in our own hearts and homes. And that question is, is there an underlying message of Christmas that we need to hear? And I think the answer is, yes, absolutely there is. A couple of years ago, a preacher by the name of Rick Warren broke down that thought into three statements or truths that I hope we can hear tonight. Number one is that God loves you. First of all, Christmas is God saying that he loves you. Now, many of us know that already because of verses like John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal or everlasting life. But what we may miss this Christmas is that God loves us more than just as a world full of people, more than a, as just a collective whole. He loves you. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 16, that God is love. It doesn't say that he has love. It, doesn't, it says that he is love. It's his, it's his very nature. It's his very character. So we learn that his love, it doesn't fluctuate or grow or lessen depending on circumstances or our own performance in the day. And in the coming of Jesus, God makes makes his love for us known 
in as personal a matter as possible. And with Jesus comes this clarification that God's love for you isn't based on anything so inconsistent as whether you're naughty or nice, which is good news because I I don't know about you, but I know that in addition to what I call, what I might call my good days, I also have these very frequent, not nearly good enough days as well. But what Christmas is telling us is that God's love for me and you isn't based on what we do. His love is based on who he is. And God is love. Romans 8, 35 and following tells us in no uncertain terms that there isn't anything that can separate us from his love. This passage I'm going to read comes from uh, what is called the, the New Living Translation. I love how personal it is. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 and following. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or endangered or or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons. Listen to this. Neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in earth below. Indeed, Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks, that's good news. And it leads us to our second underlying message of Christmas. Not only does God love you, but God is with you. We're talking about right now. He's not absent. He's not distant. He's He's with us. The Bible says in Psalms 139, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Now, you may not feel God's presence, but it really has nothing to do with your feelings. Because Christmas verifies that God has come near. In fact, the Bible tells us that one of Jesus' names is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And one of the most precious promises found in the entire Bible is found in Hebrews 13, 5, where God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake or abandon you. Here's some great news of Christmas. God's never going to give up on you, never abandon or leave you. Now, we know... We've got some friends and family right here at Fifth Avenue that are experiencing loss right now. But what Christmas proclaims is that even in that moment, because of Christ, we are not alone. There are some within this room that have had had people walk out on them. Whether it was a marriage union or a work situation or family or friend, Christmas declares... That's not God. Yes, we might get so caught up in in problems or issues or sidetracked by stuff going on that it may feel like he's not near. But Jesus is the one who proclaims in Matthew 28, 20, and surely I am with you, anybody know? Always. Even to the very end of the age. That means we don't have to face anything by ourselves. You can. You can go it alone. But we don't have to. Third thing. 
God is for you. No matter how you feel, he's not against you. He's not out to get you. He's not, not out to steal your fun or make you miserable. Christmas declares that God is for you. Please hear this because some of you haven't always been so convinced or sure of this. God doesn't just love you and he's not only with you, he is actively for you. He is on your side. He has been in your corner for like forever. But it was never more clear than when he sent Jesus. Jesus says in John 3, 17, for God did not, did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Can you hear that clearly this Christmas? What Jesus is saying is that he didn't come to scold or punish or condemn us. He came to save us. That's the good news of Christmas. And if that's true, and it is, then we need to hear Romans 8.31 where it says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now think about that, please. The God who created the universe and set the stars in space and, and the world on its axis just so is the same one who says in the coming of Jesus, I love you, I am with you, I am for you. No matter who you are, where you've come from, what you've done in your life, or maybe what's going on right now, the good news of Christmas is for you. God is for you. And that's worth celebrating and worth stopping for. Now, you've all chosen to do that, at least move in that direction by being here tonight. We're going to do that together in a little special way in a, in a few moments with candles and, and song, but b before we do, I'm going to ask that you please look at the screen and look at those three truths that the coming of Jesus declares. I love you. I am with you. I am for you. Which, which one of those is most meaningful in your life this year at this time? There's not a right or wrong answer because they're all true. I'm just asking that before or maybe even the time that we hear this next special and the time we get together and sing, that you take the time to tell him, thank you for choosing to love and be with and be for me. Thank you for the truth of Jesus that is found in Jesus Christ. Amen.